Introduction to Drawable Currently we are in section 3 and we are about to check out the second video of this section. So in this video we will see what are drawables, types of drawable, what are raster drawable, what are vector drawables and also what are the difference between these two. So firstly let's see what exactly we mean by drawable resources in Android. Well a drawable in context of an Android application can be defined as a graphic that can be drawn on the screen. For example, on the left we have the Facebook application. So the image being displayed on the screen is basically a drawable resource. All the icons that we use within our application such as the notification icon, back navigation icon, they are all drawable resources as well. Even when we press the button, the color of the button changes. So in that case, we are again using the drawable resource. So just remember, the resources that can be drawn on the screen are basically the drawable resources. Now in Android, there are several types of drawable resources, such as the raster graphic or the bitmap image. Then we have the vector graphic, stateless drawable. Now in case of button, we have already used the stateless drawable. That is, the background of the button changes with respect to the state of the button. Now proceeding, we have transition drawable and there are a lot of drawable classes such as shape drawable, clip drawable, nine patch drawable and the list goes on. Now among all of these drawable, most of the time in your application you will use the raster graphic and the vector graphic. So firstly, let us get an overview of what are they. So the vector graphic are basically the scalable vector graphic. And these graphics automatically scale up and down based on the device screen densities. Now these type of graphics works well for only the simple images. Now next we have the raster graphic or the bitmap image. Now this drawable resource is basically a non-scalable graphic. That is the size of the graphic does not change across different devices. Now in Android we can use raster graphic in the form of PNG, JPEG and also GIF files. But it is highly recommended to use the PNG format within your application whenever it is possible. Now we will explore more about these two topics such as vector graphic and also raster graphic in our upcoming clips as well. Before we proceed and check out how to implement the vector drawable within our application, let us first check out the differences between raster drawable and the vector drawable. Now in case of raster drawable, they are non-scalable graphic. That is, their original dimension remains same across different screen density devices. But the vector drawable adjusts their size as per the device screen density in which they are rendered. So looking at this, the raster drawable might get pixelated. But the vector drawable never get pixelated. That is, they are not blurred in all the cases. The raster drawable are never stored automatically in the cache memory. That is, they are created again and again whenever they are used within the application in the runtime. But the vector drawable are rendered only once and they are stored in the cache memory. So the next time we use the vectors within our application, they are loaded from the cache memory. That is, they are not redrawn on the screen. Now in Android, the raster graphics exist as PNG, JPEG and GIF files, out of which the most preferred format is PNG and then we have JPEG format which is quite acceptable but using GIF within the application is highly discouraged. On the right, vector drawables exist as XML files within the application. Now proceeding, in order to maintain the compatibility of the raster drawable, you have to store different dimensions of the images for different screen densities, like we saw in the previous videos. Now this results in the increase of application size, that is the size of the APK file. But on the other hand, in case of vector drawable, we can use one single file and render it across different screen density devices. Hence, it results in the smaller APK size. Well, this is one of the major advantage of using the vector drawable within an application. Now the raster drawable takes lesser time to render on the screen. 
but in case of vector drawable, it takes more time to render on the screen. So looking at all of these points, we can say that the raster drawable and the vector drawable has their own pros and cons. Now the question arises, when should we use the raster drawable and when should we use the vector drawable? Well, looking at all of these points, it is highly recommended to use the raster drawable in case you are using the complex graphics. Now what is meant by the complex graphics? Well, these are few examples of the complex images. Now you should always use vector drawable in case you have some simple graphics, such as these images. Now if you notice in all the images, we are using flat material colors. And their shape and structure is also very simple. In the next video, we will see how to use raster graphics within our application and make them compatible for different screens.